Until my back hits the ground and pain wrecks my body. <laughs> Why? Go away! Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to the letter. Okay, we're gonna continue where we left off, where uh, Isabella is looking for Rose who is apparently in the attic and not the demon, you know, so let's see how well this will end. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. Ooh, great. Creepy. Nice. It branches out into two major wings of the mansion, the east and west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side, but the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and some might find it less likely for Rose to wander and set herself in there. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So I head towards the west wing first, where a simply wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase though, the stairs of the attic have a steep narrow made of old stones and covered with thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air when with every step. Thank god it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might have easily stumbled and fall. With how old this place is, there is no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passage up- Great! There's no light! Oh man, I'm getting scared. <laughs> Why didn't they bother to add one here when they renovated it? Escapes me. Sheesh, they did it with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end of at the end. Ew, what the hell's up with the music? Stop! It looks exactly as it did since the last time I was here, full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd, I thought they cleaned everything? Did the crews miss this room? Ugh, cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here! Was I dre was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no, it could have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of the state is doing such a remarkable job of making me sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Man, when is Ethan Bradbury gonna come out and just tell me it's a prank, bro, and he's the demon? It's nobody else! Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before sh the curse got her. Ugh, shut up, Bray, you're not helping. Don't make this scarier than don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, oh my god. Then where is she? I don't know! <laughs> I don't like the sounds. I'm getting scared. What the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. Oh god, I'm so scared to look. I'm leaving. We must have uh, angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country believe- That is racist. Can I just say that right now? Yeah, a lot of people in the Philippines do believe in like spirits and ghosts and demons and all that stuff. It's very common there. Like I've heard stories from like my mother and like my grandmother and all that stuff. Even my cousins too when I went to the Philippines. Um, I saw a ghost there. Uh, that was not fun. <laughs> so it's I, I totally believe in this in this stuff too. So this is why this is why I'm really fucking scared. When it deals with like horror slasher where there's like a murderer, it doesn't really scare me in those kind of games or those kind of movies and stuff like that. The one that really scares me is like the demons and like spirits and stuff. That really freaks me out. So oh god, I've always strived to be a model employee, but now is not the time. No. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity! Briar Realty can find another agent who's more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted house. Before leaving, I take one last look of the, at the gloomy old room. To just to check. Oh my god, I don't want to check, just go! Huh? What's this? No! My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss when, when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like- A letter? Oh god, we're starting the horror shit now! Oh no! <laughs> Lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. A few days back, me and a few other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last to take a look inside it in the attic and leave, but this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have left it in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only a set there's only one set of stairs leading to this attic. The letter is in exactly pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. 
The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried that it'll fall apart if so if as so much I touch it. But with great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. What? Yup, yup, we're gonna die! Alright! Oh my god. Help me, help me, help me, yeah, help me! God! Nothing but the words help me fills the page, all of it seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase goes on and on until- oh god, what? Until what? Until what? What? <laughs> is this like a chain rail? Do you guys remember that back in the day? Where, um, if you read this and don't send it to five people, you will be cursed. People used to send that to your email and stuff because like, we didn't really have like, you know, Tumblr and all that stuff. Or like Twitter or Facebook or whatever. It was like MySpace email or it was like an MSN or something like that. If you don't send this to five people, you will be cursed. Great. The fucking ghost is like a millennial. <laughs> Send this to five people or else. Or else what? I don't wanna know. Or else what? I don't wanna know. As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands tremble as I dread- My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. No! Is it in the room? I need to get out of here. Ah! Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next to me has frozen me on the spot. No, is a demon here? I can't, yo. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm gonna cover my eyes. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. No! <laughs> Ew! Yo, get a pedicure, dude. What the fuck? A pair of bloody soaked feet enter my field of vision, covering the gaping, covering in gaping wounds, with skin eating away to reveal flesh, bone, and the manner of things that isn't meant to see. Oh God. It's too much! Yup! All of it's too much! I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Lord, please help me. No! I don't want to look up! Yo, I'm closing my eyes! I don't give a shit! I don't care if I'm a coward or whatever. This, this, I'm not dealing with this demon, nope. I shut my eyes, muttering favorite prayers under my breath. Our Father, who art in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be thy name. <laughs> oh no, I'm scared! Prayers taught to me as a child by my mama and papa slip out endlessly through my teeth. But oh, but God, oh God, if you had listened to any of my prayers, please listen to this one! And if God doesn't listen, at least I won't see that thing that kills me. A cold comfort. I, I wait. And I wait some more. But nothing happens. I dare to take a peek. Oh no, please don't. Only to find that ghost, that thing, whatever it is, gone. Relief washes over me as I shake- I shakily get up from my feet and back away towards the door. Wrenching it open, I slip through a second, uh, thought to make a run for it down the stairs and into the hallway. I take a look back to make sure it isn't behind me. Any other person might have spotted, dismissed it as a trick of the light, and an overreactive imagination- You think a fucking, like, bloody feet is a trick of the light? You're an insane person, no. But I am not taking any chances. I am not giving that another chance to catch me off guard. I don't think I ever feel safe until I got out of here. Whatever it is, every warning bell in my mind is telling me that it's going to jump out of me at any moment and get me while I'm still in this place. They leave that! Get out of here! Them. I'm freaking told them! Oh man, oh man, oh man! Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and... <laughs> my shoe slips and I find myself falling- No! Until my back hits the ground and pain wrecks my body. <laughs> Why? Go away! My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. Oh no. Go away. No! What happened? The last thing I see are those feet before I know darkness. The buzz breaks the silence. I start to rouse, pulling into consciousness against my own will. I never felt this tired before. I just want to sleep, but insisting buzzing, poking, and prodding isn't letting me. My old mattress may not be the comfiest place, but this doesn't make me any eager to wake up. Five more minutes, Becca. I swat away what is nudging persistently at my side. Can't I just get an extra few minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work harder... I'll, I'll work hard once I'm up. A hand slightly taps my cheek, and suddenly cold is suddenly being pressed at the back of my head. The icy sensation slowly spreads through my area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. Is it Isabella? Isabella? Oh, can you hear me? Isabella? Oh, 
okay, where are we now? The fog immediately leaves me from my mind. In a moment, I recognize the voice and, I, and my eyes snap open. Oh! Uh, Rose, what? Where the hell have you been? They're looking down at me as Rose. Another woman loiters beside her, but my attention is focused on my co-agent to even ask where, it's the, where there's someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she's keeping a straight face, or trying at least. A wave of dizziness washes over me as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Luckily, the feeling subsides after a few seconds, um, until only a mid-throbbing somewhere at the back of my head remains. With a little assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. She hands me an ice pack and gestures me to go press it where I suspect a small bump has already been formed. If the light ache in the area indicates anything- Alright, Isabella, where are we? Girl, where the hell have you been? The Ermengarde Mansion. Why? Ow, my head. And the date today? October 21st? Rose. Last one. Can you count to 15 in reverse order? 15, 14, 13, 12 teen? No. That's wrong. <laughs> 12 teen? Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is in any way serious. Who are you? This time, I curiously regard to the woman standing beside Rose. It's impossible to overlook her with the way she sh towers over us. And here I thought Rose is already tall. Who is she anyway? One of the remaining cleaning crews? Yeah, right. Does she look like a cleaning crew? <laughs> but how primly dressed she is. I don't think anyone would want to clean in the suit, an expensive suit at that. The gloves alone must have already cost a fortune. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an un almost unreadable expression, before finally fixing on a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself uh, as she does so. She may be far from cl the cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like a supervisor during the evaluation. Just do it, please. I eye them both warily, but recite everything she asked. Rose releases a breath of relief once I'm done. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you alright? Exasperation soon replaces the dull ache. The memory of what is l the memory's a little fuzzy, but the attic and- there there was someone, Rose. In the attic. Someone? You mean a client? No. Well, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute- No, not any of those. They're- Ugh. I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Both Rose and the lady look at me like I've grown another head. Did I say something weird? Rose quickly casts an apologetic smile to the woman before the awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman's smile, the same one that she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should show this to the troublesome clients or just avoid trouble in general, she advised. It's also the same one she gives you when I have done something particularly absurd that may cause us to lose potential sale. Yeah, so maybe this lady's a client, she wants to buy the house or something? Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes, she takes both of my shoulders, gently squeezing it, and to much of my patience she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really alright? What happened? I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And... and there's... whoever it is. Then I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh. Oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open! We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose! Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. And you know what? No one is gonna believe Isabella, right? Because they're just gonna be like, Oh, she just hit her head! She's just seeing things! No, I'm fine! I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important sale because of a minor bump in the head. An extreme minor bump. I've had worse when I was a kid. There is This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also a part of me that I've lost that bonus BRC promise, but that's completely beside the point. Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return to the cold compressor to her and push her myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase railing to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm a-okay. I just took a tumble down the stairs by a demon. I'm okay. The two of them exchange a worried glance and Rose assumes a contemplative look. 
I bite my lower lip in anticipation. If she says no... Right, you in. A smile threatens to slip out from me. But if I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. Okay, I, I would prefer if we just leave in general, but whatever. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. Suddenly, a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer, interrupting our banter. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back and a little myself. She isn't really- she isn't really intimidating. Well, she is, but not in that scary negative way. Far from it, actually, her demeanor simply commands the air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. <clears throat> at our lack of response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usual, is swift to catch in my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. Okay. Marianne McCulloch. Tri- Trially Rose Designs? Interior design- Oh, she's an interior designer! Gotcha. She hands Rose a business card. The war's interior designer catches my eye before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for its 7th century influences then? I won't hold it against her, though. Despite the hearsay and the remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fitter and furniture have been kept completely intact and restored to a pristine condition. I suppose some people find that the trip to the past feeling appealing? After all, with what it offers, this place could be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please... Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. Okay, I like her accent. She's got... she's got the... Irish accent, so I'm really into that. <laughs> I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me, and I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but instantly disappear disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. What? This is the Ermengard Mansion, right? Someone already bought it? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to figure out the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Suddenly, Rose nudges me with her elbow. We check with our... Uh, we'll check with our supervisors, I don't know. How about we be professional? Those few moments have given me enough to clear my head in any nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. How's my relationship with, um, uh, Rose? Oh, Mar- Oh! Marianne? It's not even Rose? Okay, so what up with, uh, Marianne, at least? What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze onto me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I've de I haven't dealt with an awkward situation like this before. I may have screwed up at times, but it doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I work in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. I if you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly and deeply after I finished. She appears to be a reasonable person anyway, given her proper explanation, she surely understands. I thought something looked odd when I arrived here. Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe of a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss up the thumbs up she gives me during the good job, and I can't help but swell with pride. Still, I have already prepared myself to dial the number on the Luxborn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if, for some reason, something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. That's a whole level of unfair. We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCullen returns, looking for a little frustrated but with an apology clear on her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. In the house? I mean, I would prefer if you go somewhere else, but whatever. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. 
I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You could stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our oh, guests arrive. Oh, I don't want to stay! And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance of her wristwatch before tossing the knee a set of keys. And hurry! We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay. Got it. Cool, and I, I just leave and never come back. <laughs> the two of them disappear behind the parlor doors. Their departure brings while in stillness that keeps me company, neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone like this, it's impossible to think of what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse having, uh, having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. I want to think it's, it's just as such. I don't think of it as such, so I can work it in peace. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Except a small part of my mind begs to differ. And if I'm going to completely be honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's in the house, and I don't want to know. The, the keys Rosa just handed me dig in my palm. It's jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin, and how hard I'm knuckling it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do, and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer closer to my body, I exit the house and get what Rose asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. Ah, no! What's happening now? Ah. <laughs> a flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or un uh, under duress. Standing in their presence, men and women of wealth and status, all dressed in the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses in various colors, compose the medium-sized crown. Their necks, their arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy fe feathered hats on their heads. I really hope there aren't any magpies living near, like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day on this. They are murmuring among themselves, looking at the estate facade praisingly, with some argue about whose mansion has a superior architecture. But most of it stops when Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased about being ordered around, but what can I do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you've filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Yes, where the demon could be. <laughs> Hearing this, a few wandered to me. They are most likely old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Oh, okay, Miss Miss Macaulay also joins our group, but really catches my eye is the elegant dressed pair that she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you. When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you. I'm gonna take a while, I guess, to say these are the people who she thought was the one that bought the house already. Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. This guy kind of has like an asshole look. <laughs> oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. What? Uh, they must have been clients that she was talking about. I must have seen their faces somewhere before, some magazine or the television? I can't quite remember. But then again, most of her guests have likely ended up on the news, one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular, though, they aren't just as loudly as the others. And in the simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. Ugh! The guy standing beside me doesn't seem to mind, though. And if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I'd think they're brother and sister if it wasn't for the public display of affection. Are they? Is there- Oh god, if there's incest going on, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> the matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Okay, thank fucking god, my only... Sunshine? Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is to get this deal closed before the current owners can even think about canceling the listing. I hope one of the people in my mine or Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. When they aren't whispering among the group, or going ooh, I know, over everything and other, they ask questions. 
For how the restoration process went, the history of the place, I answer them all. More than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture mostly. However, I'm careful however I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Not a good enough material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxburg knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals. All of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Aren't like a realtor supposed to like disclose the fact that something terrible happened in this, or is it just considered an urban legend that it's possessed by demons? Even the glass thing, colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I stop talking, her attention is already somewhere else. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure that will go over well, but I don't give a shit you're buying the house, right? Fine, anger the demons if you want. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, ma'am. But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. So basically, if anyone puts a bid on the house, they're gonna get their lawyers to be like, it belongs to them, because they're all rich and fancy. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. The rest of their conversation gets lost in the chatter of our com companions. I want I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, please let these be the guys to be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. This is a nice kitchen. Very rustic and, you know, old-timey wimey. <laughs> Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put into retaining the home's classical appeal. The open hearth of the end of the room, in particular, looks amazing, like the ones I've seen in the fairy tale books. Mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of complaints about the suit and tar staining the bricks, and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning this will be, they'll man they managed to pull it off. Or make it look presentable, at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. This is the first time a guy in grey speaks out Mr. Luke Wright, my memory supplies from the forms of they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time, something lights up in my eyes at the moment of the undercroft. What's so interesting about the basement, I don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now he gives me the impression of a child who has seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see children act that way, my younger siblings especially. On a grown man? It's almost funny. It's a little bit weird. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Truly? And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. Yes, you can start one here and the demon can drink wine with you. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big it's enough? It's space you're worried about, sir. The Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he has started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score! Can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every single room of the ground floor and heading to the parlor. Funny, this is the first time BRC has uh, had to survey the property. I come, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care, no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over a possible sale. Why is there like someone whispering now? No. Okay, the demons in this fucking room. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It's not as small as goosebumps on my skin, a feeling of being watched intently. 
Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. A chill settles down my spine, making me feel sick, and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I... I can't do this! I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group must have requested for a break anyway. If I can just- Excuse me? Everyone? We- We will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. Uh, I let them sit while I retreat in a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold. Don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while. The same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. <gasps> Until a t hand taps my shoulder. Hello. Oh. Are you there? <laughs> Hi. Yes, ma'am. Oh, look at you. Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Are you, like, making fun of me? Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyway... Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick feeling is plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by un utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expectantly as I suggest to come up with an Wait, answer. ma'am, I... you see... But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking with any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with a tight smile, she looks as if she tasted a particular sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. That's not the problem here! You haven't formally said, hey, we're gonna buy the house. You're just like, when can we move in? You didn't even fucking put down a price, dude! And just between you and me... This place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still feeling- Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Okay. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. Wow, okay, I don't really care. Then just put an offer down. And it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> what would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I try not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. What the fuck is wrong with this woman? I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss McCullen, who only gives me an apologetic smile and shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shovels through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do Wonderful. that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella! Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. This bitch! I am done with you! What the hell is wrong with this woman? It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors, too, and... What's this? Oh no! She found the letter! A look of confusion and disgust appears on her face. Turning to her husband, help me... He merely shrugs in reply. That's, uh, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. Darling, buttercup. Art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as... dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You know what? With, with the way this woman is acting, I really won't give a shit if the demon eats her first or something. <laughs> you should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. 
I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your taste. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this... form. That's true, chain letters come from spam emails. <laughs> it, it's my turn to be puzzled. What do they mean? Rose and I double check everything. Are, are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. But with the way that Ma'am Hana is leading the conversation, I'm afraid exa that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good her. to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns and hands you the strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I can only stare down at the paper, at the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle in my grip, and my breath grows labored. Dread quickly fills Isabella? my mind. Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say no, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place because I remember everything as clear as day. The letter and those blood-soaked limbs in the attic. It's the real! I I'm sorry, I didn't know. Carelessly? Careless, I've been so careless! How do I even tell them without even looking like I've gone mad? Um... Is remember the letter said show send this to five people. So what I'm taking a wild guess is that like um, Luke and Hannah are already part of this like group because we showed the letter to them. I you know as much as, as Rose pissed me off earlier for not like calling us or whatever, I'm not gonna show it to her because I don't want her to be involved with the demon. So I'm gonna not show. I Rose, I. The words are stuck in my throat. I want to tell her I really do, but is she really gonna believe me? She already dismissed me earlier. It's a concussion, she said. It's not. There really is something in this house, in that attic, in that letter. It's going after us. Please believe me. me. Is Isabelle all right? Ma'am Hannah's voice breaks through the haze, beginning to cloud my mind. Rose is looking down at me, worried etched on her features. I didn't even notice when she removed the wrinkled paper from my hands and pushed me down to sit on a nearby chair. From the edge of my vision, I can also make out the Miss McCullen asking for a passing food server to for a glass of water. Through it all, Mr. Wright stands on the sidelines. Although curious, he appears more inclined to watch than the, the scene than help. They're all likely to believe me as Rose does. To everyone, whatever this house is just a hose. A cautionary tale for Isabella, children. do you need me to call that ambulance? She offers me a drink, but I push it away. I need to get out of here before I can cause even bigger commotion, clearing my head and taking a breath of fresh air. Anything to take my mind off of things. No one's going to believe me no. anyway. I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me. I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. By yourself? Bowing my head, I mutter quickly an apology and gather my stuff to make a quick exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not, I've caused trouble for Rose, and can be quite unforgivable of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up Isabella, to me. Isabella, wait! The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler, eyes, eyes softer, and a fond smile spreading over her hey, lips. I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. You didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day, and look. She hesitates, completely trailing up before shifting her gaze down in her hands, a small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's a stupid letter again. My hands stiffen when she gives it back, and I take it nevertheless, more as an automatic response than the desire to have it back. If I I'll throw it away if I can. I don't think that will work! But I have this nagging feeling that one in a way or another, it finds its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly. And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. Yeah, just make sure it's not full of demons. But, I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something... I don't know, this... big. 
I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... Are you telling me I'm fired or something? My mind what? stops. Wait, no, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She clasps her hands together in front of me, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand, to some extent. That doesn't mean I feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at any unlucky turn in the situation is taken, or for her, I really don't know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay, okay just for today. I'll I thought she meant in general. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please, don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob. And I don't even know what that means! Is- That just sounds unprofessional, what the heck? <laughs> At the memory, we both start to burst into helpless giggles, earning us a strange look from the guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? I'm still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this one I for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can voice one, one word of complaint. Okay, guys, I'm gonna end this episode of the letter right here. Um, so it's pretty obvious that the three out of the five people that Isabella has invited into this demon game is uh, Luke, Hannah, and um, Marianne because she was also reading the letter when they were looking at it. So we got three people. I didn't want to give it to Rose because she might be included in this story so at least I could save someone, right? So there's two more that have to join this game and I'm gonna take a guess and say like one of them is gonna be her friend, the teacher, because she's gonna be end up worrying about Isabella and then come here, right? So I think um, she's gonna be a part of this, which is not good. I don't know what the demon wants still. But we'll find out. Anyway, if you guys are enjoying this video, remember to leave a like. Let me know in the comments what you think. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next episode of The Letter. Thank you guys so much for watching this. And I'll see you all in this next episode. I hope it doesn't get weird. <laughs> Alright, bye! Hello, Peter. Mr. Lee. Um, hi! I thought you were out of town. Did you find what you were looking for? Forward or develop another character, video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4.